Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to have to answer the question, when do solar eclipses actually occur? And when we think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. Let me illustrate why it should make sense. Well, the Earth takes trips around the Sun once every 365 days, once every year, and the Moon goes around the Earth once every 27.3 days. And since the ecliptic plane is the plane that defines the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, and then we have the Moon's plane, which define the defines the orbit of the moon around the earth, those planes make an angle of about five degrees, meaning that most of the time the moon is either above or below the ecliptic plane. And only twice during the orbit of the moon around the earth does it cut through the ecliptic plane. But most of the time when that happens, let's say the sun is over here and it cuts through the ecliptic plane over there, there's no way that the moon ever can then be between the earth and the sun directly to block the light. But a month later, as the moon just continues to go around the earth you can see that there will be more of a chance for that to happen and a month later again and then finally the earth the sun and the moon will be in a position in such a way that now the sun will go over there relative to the moon and the earth and the moon will then cut right through the ecliptic plane when it travels between the earth and the sun and at that point the moon can block the light between the sun and the earth and therefore cause a solar eclipse so that happens once here and then once again about six months later. So what we find is that typically a solar eclipse occurs about twice a year. And here's my pen here. So two times per year is typical, but it's, it has happened as much as five, five times per year, but that is a very rare occurrence. Five solar eclipses in a single year occur typically only about once every hundred years, and that's a very approximate number. So you can see it's, it's really a very rare uh, occurrence. But typically it's twice per year, about six months apart. And what you see is that this reoccurrence, twice a year, six months apart, changes about 10 days every year. This event happens 10 days earlier every year. So here are some examples. In 1997, we have one on March 9th and one on September the 2nd. It was a total eclipse and a partial eclipse. A stands for annual eclipse, where the moon couldn't quite cover the whole disk of the sun and the edge of the sun was still visible. In 98, we had one in February 26, which you can see is roughly 10 days earlier in the year. And we have one on August 22nd, again, roughly 10 days, more like 11 days earlier. And then the following year, 99, February 16, 10 days earlier, August 11, 11 days earlier. Then in 2000, we have one in February the 5th and July the 31st. So this pattern continues. And then all of a sudden, you see that we had another set of solar eclipses in the year 2000. We have one on July the 31st, and we have one on July the 1st. We have one on February the 5th and December the 25th. Notice that those days are about a month apart. Wow, about a month apart, which means that twice in one month, so to speak, there was a possibility of a solar eclipse. Notice that all of them were partial solar eclipse, means that we caught the sun at one edge one month, and then we caught the sun again at the other edge the following month when it passed, passed through the uh, point, through the line between the sun and the earth once again. So that can happen once in a while. That happens about twice every 18 years or so, and there seems to be a pattern to that as well. But then again, it goes back to its normal self. Then in 2001, July 1st was the previous one, June 21st, and instead of December 25th, December the 14th. So you can see there's this pattern where it happens about twice a year and happens 10, about 10 or 11 days earlier every year to repeat that same pattern. Now notice that as the moon travels around the Earth, it does so in 27.3 days, and of course, one complete orbit is 360 degrees. If you divide 360 degrees by the number of hours in 27.3 days, you find out that the rate of travel for the moon is 0.55 degrees per hour. And since the disk of the sun is about a half a degree, the moon, as it goes through that disk, through that point, can travel as much as two hours when it starts covering the sun to where it finishes covering the sun. So the whole event can take as much as two hours in the case of a total solar eclipse. With a partial eclipse, the period is a lot less than two hours, can be as little as a little over an hour to almost two hours, depending upon what type of solar eclipse. So you can typically say the event lasts about two hours in, when it's a totality because the moon's orbit causes the moon to travel at 0.55 degrees per hour. So there seems to be that regular pattern and you can see that it's not at any given time of the year. Sometimes it's March, September, February, August, July, December, June, December. So it varies 
depending upon the cycle of the moon and the solar eclipses as they occur at different times of the year. So you can't just say, oh, solar eclipses only happen in March and in uh, September or March and, and October, anything like that. That's not really the case. It just changes from year to year to year. But there does appear to be a pattern, and you can see that how the pattern kind of works. So if you want to know when the next one is, either you, you can write down the pattern or you can simply look it up in a book and say, okay, when is the next solar eclipse? And if we just had one, then you know the next one will probably happen in about six months later. Now, one of the things is the solar eclipse is not always visible in the same location on the Earth because it can happen when it's nighttime on one side of the Earth and daytime on the other side of the Earth, and it comes and it goes. It's only a one- or two-hour event, and so you don't always see it twice a year because it can happen at nighttime, it can happen during the daytime, so to speak. All right, so that gives you a little bit more insight as to when solar eclipses occur.